everything up. Didn't put my thing in yet, but I'm going to right now. Good morning, anybody that's watching. This is Louie Hose with another bad stream. To be fair, I didn't have high expectations. I don't have uh, high expectations for the stream anyway. Yesterday I was going over specialists, but I didn't... I don't think I went over all of them. I went over the ones that mattered though. And I found out something interesting. That Guerrilla Warriors can be painted war ones. Just because they have better melee defense. Anyway, today I'm probably going to be doing a bunch of things. The stream is titled Anti-Infantry Specialists. And that's just what the Swebby and Mark Commander are. Or Mark Commander are. They're more anti-infantry now than they were before Caesar and Gaul came out. Actually before the Daughters of Mars pack and the Swebby roster change came out. Because before that they didn't... Uh, Club Levy and Bloodsworn were really weak and probably not worth bringing into combat en masse. Like you had to use like a bunch of them to make your army combat effective. Now they're pretty effective by themselves. Still, Bloodsworn are probably better off fighting spear units than they are against other sword units. Especially legionaries because they will lose. Wolf Warriors probably will win against them, but you never know. Yes, like for example, yesterday I found out something interesting. Well, actually, I, I didn't find out something interesting. It was the first test on the first test with the Aravachi. When my um, my guerrilla warriors threw their uh, precursors, it killed seven models. Whereas when the painted ones killed. Uh, when the painting went through there, it killed like two or three. Actually, it killed three models. And they still lost. I thought that for a second that the Guerrilla Warriors were more accurate. However, they aren't. I checked the database. Anyway, where I left off from yesterday was here. Where I was... I was, um... I'm continuing my war against Dacia because they're about to overrun Thrace. Uh, Besieging settlement. Let me just get out of that. Yeah. See, I've expanded my territory to over here. And Pompeii has pretty much taken over most of Octavian's territory. Lepidus is still over here, and there are Latin rebels, okay. Antony isn't doing much. I think he's losing to Parthia, that's why. I, on the other hand, have expanded my territory to all of here. And this is pretty much, except this. Like, this is my... Um, these guys are German. These guys are German. The Iceni declared war on me and the other Germanic tribes, so we're all banding together to fight them. After I fight this battle over here, I'm going to fight this one over here. If I can just pan over to there. Warriors Actually, because I think they're going to come out and fight me before I go out. I'll go in there and fight them because. They outnumber me by two units. However, again, I have anti-infantry units. The reason why I consider, like, Swebby more of an anti-infantry faction than, like, other factions that have naked warriors or whatever isn't because they have berserkers, but it's because three, yeah, about three of their units, three out of four, they have... 
Well, out of six units, so half of their roster is clubs. Half of their sword rosters is clubs. They also have Night Hunters, which is a anti anti um what is it anti cav unit, obviously because they have spears. However, they, they have guerrilla warfare. I mean, they have guerrilla deployment, which means that they can deploy anywhere. They're best used when you're fighting in a heavily forested area where you can hide your men and then try to bait out a good cav unit and then take them out with the night hunters because they have the fear trait in them as well. They're not used that much in multiplayer but I find like based on their traits and what the web you lack in which is good cav units I mean, Riders of the Hunt are good, but they're also light. See? Even their general, their noble riders, which is their version of the, like, Gallic or British noble riders, are heavy, not very heavy, and in most cases will lose against them. Where was I? Okay, so I was supposed to fight this battle, which I'm going to do right now. To their hovels. It doesn't matter whether or not I do a night battle. Because these guys will still reinforce. I don't know if it's a glitch or if it's just because I haven't started a new campaign. Because I'm trying out the patch 17 beta. But it doesn't really matter. I've never really tried to fight a battle at night. Because it does kind of reduce morale for the... the um, it reduces morale for the defending faction. Or it does at least in multiple and custom battles. That also reminds me of this mode called Nightmare Mode in Rome 2. You can activate it in multiplayer or um, custom battles. It gives all units the, the scare everyone ability. Elephants don't have... Elephants are immune to fear. So they won't get scared. However, the, the scare everyone trait does not stack apparently. When you use the Hexbearer's Curse and then you use the your General's War Cry, those stack. And then it stacks with fear and then being hit from the back and whatever. However, Scare Everyone doesn't stack with um, other Scare, other units that have Scare Everyone. It does stack with War Cry and, and um, Curse, but it doesn't stack with the others. Now, why would I bring these guys instead of wolf, all wolf warriors? Remember that these guys are more anti-infantry. Now, they do have a good melee attack, but warriors! look at their weapon damage. A club has nine armor piercing and, and six base damage. A sword, even though it's, um, even though it doesn't have the same armor piercing, has better base damage. These guys are. These guys are therefore probably better against units that aren't high tier and are probably more cost effective than using wolf warriors against spear levy when I could probably be using them to get the general. They will bleed for us. Swords! We are the Run! Dark Warriors! So here's my order of battle. 
I'm probably not going to use all five wolf warriors to raid a settlement. I'm going to put these guys over here just in case. And I know it looks a little bit distorted. And for some reason my gameplay has been very... Uh, my gameplay has been very weak, I should say. I'll probably fix it in time. Their home shall be ours in only a few hours, my brave warriors. Be not a fear. Enemy reinforcements approaching. What are they against the power in our hearts? Onward for the glory of our ancestors. My melee warriors. Tremble before us. Warriors ready, sons of Walden. Servants of Walden. Deadly missile. These guys won't be needed yet. However, I should probably put them up closer. Because I'm not going to have any like unpleasant surprises over here. The re reinforcements are coming by sea. For a second, I thought they weren't in range. Warriors! Warriors, move out! Also, these guys are medium melee infantry. I don't think they're as fast as naked warriors, but they are medium melee infantry, so they are definitely mobile. See, slingers tend to take a long time to kill people. Better if I have my general over here. Warriors, I. Now, if I were to get careless with my wolf warriors, I'd probably get they'd probably get mowed down by the heavy skirmishers over here. I didn't even notice that they were taking shots at this unit. Slingers! Missile warriors! I should probably be taking shots Slingers! at the Foxman. Because this is going to take a while. For the old father! Warriors! Get running! See, this is a good idea. Because 
I don't want to take them out with my own. Warriors, move out! Get running! These guys have terrible missile block chance, and now they're coming for me. Germanic warriors! Which is what the AI tends to do. Yeah, he tends to do this a lot. This is going to be a pretty big route. in our favor. Warriors, move out! Warriors ready! Warriors! Who do not spit? Warriors! Warriors of Germania! So yeah, the battle is pretty much over. The enemy general is dead. Battle ready. Yeah, he didn't tends to do that a lot. Yeah! I only lost 171 men. The wolf warriors got a lot of kills for me. Yeah. Well, as you can see, Foxman can be very deadly to wolf warriors on the charge. There are ways of beating wolf warriors with your own infantry. It's just not easy, in my opinion. I need a lot of military allies. So I'm going to liberate these guys as well. See, I was supposed to capture it, but I decided to not bother. Because I'm going to continue For the all highest besieging settlement. up there. Because the in the future, I'm going to need allies when I'm going up against Pompeii. Because I made I made an alliance with these guys, but they decide to break it after. Now right here is my strongest army. My berserkers are up at 105 melee attack and 92 melee defense. No armor still, obviously. This one's at 99. And then my wolf warriors are pretty strong. I still have Bloodsworn and one round shield swordsman. And then I have my spearwoman, which are pretty deadly. 
now I should upgrade these guys. See, this army doesn't have bow units. It has Germanic youths, however. And that's pretty much, that's good enough for me. I'm going to need a lot of allies to take down. So Octavian is dead. That's right. I'm going to need a lot of allies to take down... Uh, what's his face? Um, Pompey. Because Lepidus is going to be destroyed too. Because he lost, I think, Carthage. And Antony is busy dealing with... Um, what's his name? Uh, Parthia. Just give me one second. I think my... F Somewhat favorite streamer is online. So he decided not to attack me. This time I'm going to try to do a night battle. Let me just see if I can get a good unit of mercenaries. It's all Gallic warriors. What I'm up against, sword bands and a uh, Celtic Warhound. This War Maiden probably has been training them, which is why they have a high... which is why Spear Levy Freemen have 25 melee attack. Like, that's really weird. Like, this army is pretty much... Like, yeah, I can pre pretty much beat it. Joy. Oh shit. <laughs> oh no, you didn't hear that. Quiet. I can't wait for the British faction to come out for Company of Heroes 2. I am sh the ghost stream. And I'm sure that you can't do this. There's a come on, come on. Ah, a beautiful night ambience. Battle ready. Hello, Reese the Beast. It actually caught me at a good time because I was thinking about stopping the stream and then watching my good friend Red Wings. But you know what? I'm going to continue. I'm just going to continue because I'm almost done with this campaign. When it comes to territory, of course. Sword masters! I want this place torn to pieces! How dare they hide behind these walls and not face us in open battle! Take these walls, men! Then take their lives! Then take whatever you will! Whoops! Their wives, their slaves, their booty! Why do you give us now? Oh, I'm liking pretty bad. 
Hi, Nosevane. How are you guys? Sorry the stream's so laggy. It's probably because of the night battle. Oh boy. You know what messes up Wolf Warriors pretty good? Dogs. Dogs are um Dogs are not infantry. Uh Shogun 2 is faster, that's for sure. Shogun 2 Our hidden units have been discovered. is harder when it comes to defeating Cav and cav charges. However, when it comes to if you like quick battles, you'll like Shogun too. The uh, I can't pronounce it properly. Date. I don't want to say date because I was watching a stream and the guy pronounced it Date. Whatever. The clan that you mentioned, they do benefit from charging and stuff. And I think that's a pretty nice bonus. I like them because of that. However, when you um, when you look at the other factions and their bonuses, it doesn't seem that big. I think they're firing at this unit over here. Longbow hunters! Deadly missiles ready! We serve Germania! They have to be that close just to fire? I should have put a spear wall up. Spear I didn't know you had to be this close to fire with them. Gotcha. I want, I'm putting my spears up front because I don't want his cab to hit my wolf warriors. No, that doesn't matter, unfortunately. I've never liked Realm Divides. The very first time I played Shogun 2, uh, my very first campaign was with the Tokugawa, and about 40 turns in I got Kyoto, because I thought that's what you were supposed to do, get Kyoto as fast as possible, and that's when I found out what Realm Divide really does. Ever since then, I've been very careful as to when I'm capturing Kyoto. Our hidden units have been discovered. Oh, jeez. I have to move up. We'll kill them all. Get running. Proud to act for Germania. 
Yeah, and they're gonna charge anyway. My Spear Brothers will hold. I'm starting to lag a lot. I don't like it. I'm not going to bother throwing my precursors in. Actually, no, I'm going to put those guys over here. Just so that these guys don't fall. Because that would suck. Our general is under attack. If all those fails, I still have my spear wall over here. Warriors, move out! Melee fighters, ready! Ready! Move it! Sword masters! Yeah, that got most of them. Get running! What curse you? Oh, there's a painted ones. I didn't see that. Probably won't change anything. But... Oh yeah, I'm starting to lag really bad. I'm lagging really bad. Uh, Chosokabe is the faction that has the best archers. One of our units has used all its ammunition. Chariots, no!
That's not good. It's a good thing I noticed it. Like with this lag, it was hard to notice. The battle is turning in our favor. Everything's gonna be all right now. We are the dark forest warriors. Warriors. Scrapper is ready. Come on, ready. Yeah, with all that lag, I thought I'd take more casualties. Most of them came from the chariots because I probably wasn't paying attention to them. Ah, oh, whatever. I won anyway. Took out... I pretty much took out the entire army because it was a settlement battle. me I think it was supposed to rain today the dog the dogs probably got some kills but yeah the biggest way to counter um, if you have them is to, to counter wolf warriors is probably to use dogs in my opinion because of their lack of armor as well as the fact that they are more anti-infantry specialists Seventy-two food. Oh my, that's a lot. Oh, Father, be praised! How can I help? I already have high melee attack, so I'd be better off with that. Hmm. Now what else was it supposed to do? I wonder if Red Wings wants to do 2v2s. Uh, just give me one second. Please, give me a break. If I was him, I'd be taking to tier 3 right now. Who's tier 2? I don't know where his tier 3 is. Admittedly. Just give me a minute, guys. Alright, Puted, welcome back. <laughs> That's right, Doogies, never give me a break. Um, uh, shit! Oh. oh, I think he's a little too busy, so I'll just continue and then. Yeah, I'll see where this goes. Cause I tend to try to stream stream for one hour, and then call it a day. But I think I've been streaming for uh, more. Was Tokugawa a uh, monk faction? No, Tokugawa was um, historically the faction that became the. The to the shogunate. In game, they benefit from Mitsuke's and 
Kisho Ninja like the Hattori. However, unlike the Hattori, they don't have like other specialist units except the Kisho Ninja. Their campaign is hard. However, the only reason I played them is because historically they became the Shoguns. Thought it was a good idea to probably play as them. I mean, to be fair, I just just I, I just started up the game and wanted to play as a faction in the campaign. Now that I have money, I can do this. And yeah, that taught me like a lot. Like I'm not, I'm not used to. Um, I'm not used to, what is it? I'm not used to realm divides. I don't know if they were in Rome Total War, but yeah. What do I think about Warhammer? Warhammer is very interesting. And I have played um, Warhammer Mark of Chaos. I and mean, this is like years and years ago, before I got Napoleon. Oh, Father, be praised. I played Mark of Chaos, and that's when I, like, that's when I got interested into the Warhammer, like, Warhammer, yeah, uh, Warhammer realm, and yeah. So I know, like, I know, like, the Empire and the Orcs and whatever. No, I'm not as experienced as other people because I don't have like Warhammer 40k. But I'm like, I'm a pretty decent fan of theirs. So I'm interested to see how the Creative Assembly um, pulls off uh, Warhammer. Oh, that's why I have... Okay. Oh, Father, be praised. How can I help? I'm just wondering when's a good time to fight Pompey, because it's gonna have to happen. I have to take over Swebia, which I can do once these guys become part of my confederation, Aquitania, which belongs to Pompeii, Dacia, and Rome. Because I've already done a economic and cultural victory before with a different faction, and so I want to do a military victory. Um, yeah. Well, good luck with playing as the orcs. I'm going to try out the Empire and see how they are. I don't remember too much about um, Mark of Chaos. I remember that in the demo you played as the, um, as the Empire. I think. Maybe I'm wrong. I'll have to check it out after. What happened in this campaign was, so Pompey, as you know, starts over here. Pompey didn't just go up and then take up these territories. Octavian was, um, what was he doing? He was fighting me over here, and he took, like, he went as far as probably here. Like, he didn't, he definitely didn't have Hersinia. After that, I was able to form up with, like, get my armies to uh, get wolf warriors and most of my armies. 
when I got Berserkers, that's when the Romans had a hard time beating my armies. Because before that, because I'm so... Well, I'm not the best Total War player, obviously. But because I'm, I have experience with uh, Rome 2, I mean, what am I saying? Because I have experience with Total War as a franchise, I've been able to, like, with, with uh, like, stop his armies from going all the way to, where is it? Um, where it is? Over here. I stopped him from going about here. Because I think I did lose this to a barbaric faction. After that, my allies, the Quedi, which I think I liberated. No, I didn't liberate these guys. I liberated um, these guys and three other factions. After, I, after they got stronger, they just moved completely southwest. I mean, yeah, southwest. Right into Gaul and then down here. Pompey, the very first time I met Pompey was when I was fighting here. Because eventually he got, I think he got Massalia like 30 turns ago. And that's when I made a trade with him. Like I made a trade agreement. And then we were military allies, but I guess he decided to break off and I wasn't paying attention. And so after that, he's just been taking territory after territory. And 10 turns ago, he took over Rome and pretty much destroyed Octavian. Mark Anthony over here is uh, losing against Parthia. And then Lepidus has lost Carthage to Pompey. So yeah, that's pretty much it for who I'm fighting right now. I've been doing pretty good. I have two-thirds of Suebia. I'm still waiting for these guys to accept my uh, invitation for them to join my confederation. And yeah. Once these guys join my confederation, that's when I can start invading. That's when I can declare war on Pompey. When these guys join my confederation. Because after that, I can just... I can probably make a peace treaty with these guys, Daiseni, while I deal with Pompey, and probably even Mark Antony. However, I think I'm military, I think I have a military alliance with them. Oh, well, nice. Was uh, killing Octavian nice? I mean, was it easy because I tend to have a hard time with him and it's nice to like it's nice to have another Roman um, another Roman faction as your client state because they have the exact same roster as you but you can still levy from them just in case you're moving through their territory So you got the Germans, and then you had all of Gaul. So you probably... Uh, yeah, so you probably had Bergium and whatnot, and then... Okay. So that means you're making pretty good progress, I think, towards the, the military victory goal. Is that what you're trying to go for, the military victory? Or maybe the econo uh, sorry, economic victory. <coughs> yeah. All four Roman factions are exactly the same. It's just how you use them. Which I'm fine with. What was I trying to build here? Oh, this, yes.
Yeah, that makes sense. The only problem I have with elephants is that so in some cases they have to be babysat. And I don't want to babysit units. I really don't. Like... With pike units, you don't have to babysit them unless you want them to be really, really effective. With elephants, you do. And this is the same thing with chariots. I'd rather babysit my cavalry than I than um, elephants or um, chariots. Because with elephants, you have to make sure that they don't run amok and then go into your own units. And then with chariots, you have to make sure that they don't stop in front of a unit. Because then that's when they're going to get killed. With cavalry, you kind of have to because if you let your cavalry get killed, then you lose your mobility. And losing your mobility really hurts your army. It hurts the Romans the most because they're more heavy than other factions. They rely more on heavy infantry than, let's just say, the Arvachi, which rely on heavy slash light uh, medium infantry. Mind you that Scutari are heavy, but it's not the same as uh, it's not the same as Rome. Like, have you ever played the Battle of Teutoburg? For um, sorry, <coughs> have you ever played the Battle of Teutoburg Forest, the historical battle? for orders warriors or the tribe for the tribe I love spear balls. Shame they're both heavy. Um. So I don't remember everything that happened happened in the historical battle because I have played it like twice. I think. No, I've played it once, and it was on I think hard. Basically, if you know what the battle is, it's just the Romans trying to get out of a forest before the Germans, which is the Swabian, the Cheruskai, um, run them over. And if they run you over, then you lose. The, that historical battle like, like really identifies Rome's biggest weakness. Rome is more of a faction that likes to fight in open land where they can determine where you fight and when you do it. They can determine um, which unit fights which unit. Because the Romans tend to want to have, I could, I just say, I guess you could say, um, um, what is it? They want a battle where you don't have an advantage at all. As would any faction. However, however, Rome... Let me just explain it in a better way. <laughs> um, in the battle, the cavalry, most of their cavalry deserts and goes to the Germans. The Romans need their cavalry to alert them for any like ambushes or whatever. Without their cavalry, they don't know. So in the battle, you're ambushed. Your goal isn't to try to defeat the Germans because you can't, it's impossible. Your goal is to make uh, make it out of the forest with your eagle cohorts who have the eagle standard. If you lose the eagles in the camp in the battle, then you lose the battle pretty much. 
And what happens is, there are many ways of getting out of the forest. However, you must keep your eagle cohorts alive. And it's not easy. Not at all. Why? One, you're outnumbered. Which means that you can't dictate which unit fights which. Two, even though your units are superior, you don't... Um, you'll probably get surrounded if you try to isolate one unit from like your entire army. So eventually, I think near the end, that's when you fight the cavalry. Actually, no, you don't fight the cavalry because they decide to chase off the general. And then in the end, they kill him anyway. However, Rome's biggest weakness is their lack of mobility, like I said earlier. And with the sweat, the Germans, their biggest weakness is, of course, um, even though they have good anti-infantry units, they don't have good cav. They don't have like the best cav, I should say. Now, where is right? Riders of the Hunt are pretty good. But uh, probably lagging. I'm not sure. Anyway, Riders of the Hunt are good, but they are a light missile unit, and will not and will definitely not stand up to melee cav. When it comes to like noble riders for the Germans, they're noble riders are heavy instead of very heavy like the Arverni or whatever and yeah overall their cavalry is weaker to the other Germanic factions yeah I used to think that Royal Scythia was a good fac faction to counter Rome with Basically, any faction that can move around a lot after you defeated the Cav can defeat Rome. Because in all of my Roman campaigns, whether it be like Octavian or Rome in the in the campaign, like just Rome, your biggest problem tends to be like not the very heavy melee infantry units but it's the very light javelin units that can like run around and then you can chase them and then you're there on skirmisher mode that really brings you down it's those units that really really hurt Rome and people don't know this not a lot of people know that it's those simple units that can tear down Rome pretty easily like look at Total War Attila the Huns the Huns are pretty much like Royal Scythia in Rome too, except their skirmisher, on skirmish mode they move um, farther than they do in Rome too. Like let's just say your units right here, and then you notice that the enemy is charging from like right over here. That's when they'll run, whereas in Rome too. They'll they'll run if your unit's over here. Anyway, where was I? I'm supposed to end my turn, and I keep on talking. The nomads in Rome too, like Royal Scythia. We are a proud people. Oh boy! And would be proud to count you among our friends. The the nomads in Rome too are really micro-intensive. The Huns are micro-intensive in Attila as well from my standpoint but at the same time Total War Attila is more of a like it focuses more on cavalry than it does in, on infantry and I don't really like that but it is what it is now should I go for a defensive alliance with Antony that could be a, a bad a big problem because that would that would that would cause me to 
go to war with Parthia. It could possibly do that. And I don't want to go to at war with Parthia because I am already busy fighting the Dacians. Yeah, I played for free as well. I mean, I played during the free weekend. I was going to do Medieval, but I decided to do Total War Attila. Played mostly as the Barbaric Factions because I'm used to the Barbarians. But the Huns... The Huns are pretty much the strongest faction as any faction that is the primary focus on a Total War game. Total War Attila focuses so much on cavalry that infantry are almost useless in most cases, which is why the Western Roman Empire has a hard time dealing with Attila and the Huns. Yes, uh, Hammer and Anvil is pretty fun. I think the Hammer and Anvil tactic has been like my most si the most simple but the most used tactic in the Total War franchise. Because it's so effective, thanks to the morale system. Apparently it's a minus 6 morale debuff in Shogun 2 and Napoleon. And I think Empire as well. I don't know what it is in Rome 2 or Attila. Actually in Attila you can tell. But I don't know in Rome 2. Now I'm not going to go for a defensive alliance with them right now. For various reasons. The biggest reason being that I probably probably will draw me into a war with Parthia. It's true though, it's the Huns can do sieges pretty well. I think the reason why people think that in Total War Attila you can't do sieges as the Huns is because in pretty much it, um, before Shogun 2, like in Napoleon and Empire for sure, it was pretty much almost impossible to do sieges with just cavalry. Like even if you had artillery, you would have had to destroy the walls and then storm them. But then you couldn't fight the units in buildings. I mean, if you had mounted, inf mounted infantry, you could fire in the buildings, but that wouldn't help. You definitely couldn't fight the units on top of walls. However, since Shogun 2, you can like dismount all cavalry units and then use them to fight inside sieges, like inside the walls. And I don't really use it that much. However, in Total War Attila, I don't think that's much of a problem as if you destroy the, the gates, you can just storm the entire city and wreak havoc on it. I don't know, I didn't do um, sieges. And Thrace has been destroyed. Okay. Um, I didn't do sieges when I was playing on the free weekend, just because I was too busy trying out multiplayer. Ready for orders, warriors! Oh, we can't do that. Path is blocked. Laying siege to their hovels. Yeah! yeah! Oh shoot. I don't want to have too many allies, so I'm not going to bother to liberate them this time. Not this time. Ready for battle. I've noticed that, like, skirmishers 
archers, slingers, do more damage now. And that's just that just goes in line with the cavalry priority in this game, in Total War Attila. Again, in Total War Attila, cavalry are like top priority. Because in every game up to that, it was infantry that won you battles. Well, actually, in Napoleon and Empire, it was kind of artillery because they had, like, no ammunition limit. Oh, Father, be praised! How can I help? But in Attila, it's different because you mainly rely on cavalry. Their charges are devastating, especially with the Huns because they have... Most of your light units have better speed than other factions. Then you have their deadly mounted war bands. And yeah, they're just a really nice faction to play as. But I like I like Rome 2 and Attila because it focuses like both of the games fo focus on Rome and how they deal with um the barbarians and a faction that that um that they're that could like destroy them. In Rome 2 and Attila, that's all it is. The barbarians. I mean, yeah. No, I've noticed that too. I mean. I mean, um, I noticed that they're pretty strong, but I think, I think when it comes to, like, the Sassanids, like, the mortals are pretty good from my perspective, but yeah, you're probably right, though. The barbarians probably aren't that cav based. What was I supposed to? Do? Oh yes. It's funny because I'm. A little bit nervous that Pompey will declare war on me preemptively and then attack me. For the all highest. Father be praised. How can I help? Oh yes, that's right, I'm still at war with Dyson. And I have to broker Do peace. Attempt to sweeten truth with honey. Speak plainly, and I will deal honestly. Flatter, and you fail. I have to broker a peace deal with these guys, because if I don't, and Pompey does declare war on me, then I'm going to be fighting these guys, even though I have these guys helping me out. I'll be fighting them, and then I'll have to deal with uh, the invasion that's definitely coming. Pompey is probably like a six-star general by now. Uh, what exactly is wrong with the morale? I know, I know that some people don't like the morale system in... Attila and I like I do like how they brought back like the burning I mean the fire arrows um the fire arrows initial morale debuff and um base damage because that's how it was in Rome 2 in vanilla Rome 2 like before emperor edition obviously but I don't know I've seen the morale system. Truthfully, it's not my favorite, but it probably it probably is an improvement. But I don't know like what's wrong with it. Like, do you know what's wrong with it, though? 
maybe you you like played more battles than I did. Um. Oh wait, it, I think I know what it is. It's I've noticed whenever a unit was wavering that they instantly break. Yes, that's what it was. I noticed I noticed that too. Like whenever a cab charged in frontally to a sword unit, that they'd break. Yeah, that makes sense. That definitely makes sense. Gods above, witness that my honor is unstained, even as I accept this offer as I must for my people. Welcome, worthy friend. Let us break bread and drink ale before words pass our lips. Hmm. I'm pretty sure... Greetings, friend. I have called for good ale to ease your throat and, ha, ah, ripe women to ease other parts. They're thinking about it. That's good. So about 3,800 just to... Yes, your words show wisdom beyond you. That means I have two new armies and another um, province under my control. Um, I don't need to, so I'll just... Because I can just repl actually I can just replace most of those with spear walls. Oh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Ready for orders. And then over here, they have spear walls, so I can just one, four. Get moving. Do your duty, my warriors. Warriors all. Yeah. That makes sense. That's weird. I wonder why Mubot would ban words like that. Sorry about that. That's super weird. I think I know why it's doing that though. Anyway, yeah, I completely agree though. On some cases I feel that, you know, you have to be really good at Total War to understand how the Huns work. And on other cases, like, like for the most part, I feel like you have to be good at the Total War franchise to actually do good in Attila. Whereas in Rome 2, you don't have to be.
Hmm. I think I'm going to try to get one more battle out and then I'm going to stop the stream because that's been an hour. Ready for orders. To be 100% honest, I don't even know if I'll need this army. Let me just see the traditions. They do not have any. The generals themselves aren't that special. However, I can probably oh, use these armies. How can I help? Warriors all ready for orders. All oh, father be praised. How can I help? For now, I'm just going to leave these guys here. Come, sit. Do your duty, my warriors. I still need these two. Welcome. We will talk and then we will feast until our guts rumble and our backsides ache from overuse. They're thinking about it too. My people are in danger. Can you not join with us and attack these dogs? Mm. Unfortunately, I don't want to do that right now. The gods forbid me to say yes, for we have talked too much and said little. Yeah. I will take word of our agreement and put it before my people. They will feast in celebration. So the last faction is of course the Quadi. After that I will have all of Germania and then we'll be able to fight Pompey. Yeah. Okay, so I have most of here still fighting the Dacians and yeah that's pretty much it so again one more fight and then I'll just call it that for today I was saying that too. I was saying that and for some reason I feel that Antony is more stronger than Octavian when it comes to the initial like when you just start the campaign Antony seems stronger. He makes more money and has I think I think he has the same amount of armies as Octavian. But he makes more money and pretty much even though he doesn't have Rome he doesn't have that many enemies. Because you have to fight the Germans as Octavian, whereas with Antony you have to fight the Parthians. But you have support from the Armenians. With Octavian you have support from Gaul, Belge, and um... Yeah, but you do have to fight Pompey. Carl died? Really? I've been playing that long that my two most experienced generals are dead? Wow. Rest in pepperoni, man. 
My best general just died. I wasn't expecting him to die in 2 BC. I guess I've been playing for that long. This is going to be awkward because he was essentially my strongest general. Yeah. Most of... Before you fight Octavian, most of your fighting is in the east where you have the Parthians and like a bunch of other eastern factions. Uh, where is my records? Siegfried also died. Uh, where is Grunev? That's all the way over here. Oh, oh. Nothing special then. However, the other general was my most... Experienced. It's going to take a while to recover, but we will. Oh, Father, be praised. How can I Come, sit, share my fire. Oh, Father, be praised. How can I help? Ready for orders. Come, sit, share my fire. To be honest, I think it would be better if I put it in the biggest settlement. I think that makes it makes sense to have your strongest general like your faction leader. I've never had a max general, so I wouldn't know either. I didn't get to see who, he's, who was even watching to give them proper thanks. Still received a beast. Okay, so... I really, I really wish they made the Truskins playable. Would have loved to play them in multiplayer. Probably would have been my favorite faction too. 
with the exception of the fact that they, that they only have Etruscan Hapites as a specialist unit. But they even have noble um, infantry, and they have Italian nobles. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. I have to take care of these guys. Oh, Father, be praised. How can I help? So what am I going to do after I'm done streaming? I think I'm going to play some Company of Heroes too. Because uh, after what happened yesterday, where I was constantly humiliated. Yeah. These people trouble leaving the I know they do. However, I made peace with them for a reason. And I will not break my peace with them. For now. for battle to the halls of heroes who is who are these guys even in war with they must have upset a, like a lot My of people time is better spent feasting and hunting than listening so be quick with your chattering To be honest, I don't want to want to wait it out and then I think I'd be better off auto resolving it. If I liberated these guys, then it would become I'm 100% sure this would be Royal Scythia. They could be very useful for taking down the other factions, but I'm good for now. 
for the all highest. Thirsty for battle. Oh, that might be useful. It's funny because around 40, 40 to 50 turns into this campaign I was struggling so hard but now I'm not struggling and just conquering. Now there was a rebel, yeah here it is. Welcome, and let us be honored by your attendance and your words. I'm going to try to send my best army down there. Send these guys to... It seems like I'm going to have to get... I will have to. I'm going to try my best to avoid trespassing onto Iberia because then that's going to cause a conflict with Lepidus. And I already know that those two are fighting. Hail! As requested, no, I yes, give ear to your here. just and undoubtedly noble requests. On behalf of our people, welcome. Speak, friend, and honor us all with wit and wisdom. I don't like how Antony is stronger than I am. Pompey is weaker, but Antony has better units, which scares me. I greet you as befits your reputation. Now, friend, speak plainly, so that we may fall to Haglin. Mm, no, I'm good with Antony right now. Good and noble friend, what an honor you do us. The gods will rejoice at the words we have spoken today. Be welcome. You have my full attention. My... Truly, my good and noble friend, your kind words and learned debate have smoothed the path to agreement. I'm at 2 BC, so yeah, that makes sense. Oh, Sigurdon got sacked. So Dacia is falling. However, you still have to deal with Pompey and what's his face, Antony. And then I might, if I'm really unlucky, I'll have to deal with the Parthians, which I will struggle against.
I'm helping my allies to get territory. Join your mighty strength. Sigidon. In the grand campaign, the hardest faction to play as on a normal campaign would be, um, what's, what is it? It would be, maybe the Swebby. It might be the Swebby. Either them or the Arverni, or the Arverni, whatever. The reason why I say that is because the Arverni lacks the same roster as the Swebby. But you have naked warriors. Pretty good units still. But then with the Swebby you have to deal with the Gauls. You have to deal with them not liking you. And then you have to deal with the Romans as well. My friend, be welcome, a spirit, by all the gods. All praise to the gods. They have led us to wide speech and heartfelt friendship. I look forward to your wisdom, but I trust you will not object to a cup of wine first. Uh, I have a long ways to go to get them. Oh yeah, that's right. Those guys are hard too. RDA, the Dristan Kingdom, and Tylus are pretty hard, but... They're friends. I mean, they get along pretty well. was a mountain pass wasn't it in fact I'm still in the mountain passes that's true you do get their good troops now before their roster was expanded you didn't you had to wait a while shoot I don't like Going through with half strength. For Ready for ord warriors all. Come, sit, share my fight. 
Now, where am I standing? We don't have Aquitania, Dacia, or Latium. We're getting close to taking over here, though. For the all highest. When I play as the Averni, because I mostly play as them in Caesar and Gaul, and in Caesar and Gaul you can't take Rome, but in Caesar and Gaul, having declaring war on them early on hurts because you can't stand up to legionaries with chosen swords. You can stand up to them with naked warriors. If you can get a good charge on them, we beg for a treaty between our peoples. Some arrangement that will give us both prosperity and strength. This shouldn't create any conflicts. It shouldn't. Having them as an ally may help me when I decide to fight. Mark Antony. I'll accept. Now just give me a second while I look up something. Oh boy. Anyway. Most of my experienced generals are dying out and stuff. This keeps on happening. I don't know what I'm going to do. That's right. Pontus and Parthia, I don't think, get along. However, the chance of me fighting Parthia right now is slim. Even though Parthia is moving up north, you have to take into account the fact that I'm all the way over here dealing with Dacia, and therefore I don't have any problems with them for the time being. Now, the reason why I was saying that Swebby kind of has problems versus the Nomads is because the Nomads don't have infantry. In the campaign, they have young axes, uh, but they don't have step spearmen, which would help them out a lot. And I kid you not, it would help them out a lot versus other um, Nomad factions. It doesn't matter that much.
The Swebi are anti-infantry specialists, and that's why they tend to get hurt pretty badly against the Nomads. The Nomads don't have infantry, but they do have good bow units. The, Sarmar the Sarmatian Royal Lan- uh, no, not the Royal Lancers. The Sarmatian Horsemen have good shots per minute. Something I tend to forget about. Right now, these guys have eight, which is good. They are beaten by slingers, but that's fine. And now I've encountered Parthia, which means I could have a fallout with them. Let's see what I can do. Before you say anything, Know that I have an amulet against the evil eye. Dark sorcery will gain you naught. They're at war with Antony's Rome and they're at war with Pontus, which I should have known. So that causes problems. They also have Persia and these guys. They're friendly with Dacia. So yeah, this is going to cause some problems. I really need to start a Parthian campaign and try them out. Because I did the Armenians and I did really well with them. Oh, he took over the uh, the Latin, Latin rebels over here, so I can't take over anything. If I were to declare war on Iberia, I'd be declaring war on Lepidus, declare war on these guys, and declaring war on these guys. And right now, I'm in no position to do that. If I wanted to somehow settle all the way down here, that would be stupid. So yeah, I can't do anything, so I'll have to head back. I wonder if I can create a defensive alliance with Pompey. Your people's reputation goes before you. Find a welcome here and speak as you wish. If not... I'm sure you speak with an honest tongue. But yeah, okay, so I won't try. I cannot greet your words with approval. So I'm just gonna have to go back and wait for another opening. Good and noble friend, what an honor you do us. Go ahead. Come speak so that the spirit. I will take word of our agreement and put it before my people. Thought I had military access, I didn't. Oh well. My Berserkers now have 113 melee attack and 90 melee defense. Their charge is also 72, which is horrendously high. Oh, 
Oh, Father, be praised! How can I help? Now I wanted to do another another battle, but unfortunately I don't. Oops, my bad. Unfortunately, I don't see another battle like happening anytime soon, and I don't want you know this stream to just be me doing a campaign with no battles. Because people watch streams to see battles. I mean, they also watch streams to learn things. But they like to see gameplay. This isn't, this isn't like real gameplay. This is just me going over campaign, talking nonsense and stuff. I'm trying to get more viewers and instead I'm getting less because these streams are pretty bad. Just because I'm not getting enough campaign gameplay. I mean, I'm not going to play multiplayer today. I'm going to focus on Company of Heroes 2. So yeah, unfortunately because I can't get another battle, I'll try to continue the campaign off stream. And so, I'm gonna... I did... Yep, I did 7 turns, so I'll just call it that for today. Or maybe I'll just stream later on. So anyway, thanks for watching. Anybody that decided to watch the stream or watched it as a past broadcast. And I will see you guys later.